So say we want to print our text layer over the top of our blue, but we don't want them to to mix. Both these inks have transparency to it, so when they do go over the top of each other, we actually get more of this, right? Where the red will change colors because it's mixing with the blue. No matter how opaque inks are, sometimes they do mix. So you actually want to be able to pull the white of the paper instead so that you get this nice bright red. So in order to do that, we need to do a knockout and then add some trapping. So let's first expand this layer. So now it's a shape and we'll just do a knockout by going into our Pathfinder tool and doing a divide. There's other ways to do this as well, but I find divide works. I'm going to select all my red by clicking one and then going up to select and it's going to grab all that red. I can put it on a new layer if I want and I'll just merge those together. My bright red has been knocked out of the blue. But in printing, things shift. No matter what, no matter how good you're printing, there is always a slight bit of movement. We need to add trapping to give us a slight margin of error. So what we're going to do is we're going to increase one layer. You could increase your first layer, the blue or the red layer. Now if we increase the size of the red layer, we're going to start losing detail. So I would prefer to increase the blue. So I'm going to select the blue and make sure all of the blue is selected. Here, I'm going to merge that by grouping it together. Yep, it's all together. Now I'm going to go to Object, Path, Offset Path. And so what I've done now is I've just pretty much added a stroke to the image to increase it. Now offset path works a lot better. It's easier to control than adding a stroke. So I recommend the offset path tool. Let me zoom in so we can get a better look. So go to object, path, offset path. And you can see here, now the image has been increased. What that's going to allow us is if the image shifts when printing, it's still going to look okay. And you just have to play around. So as you can see, let's add a, let's add a, add a large offset path. So if we did a huge offset path, right, it would cover it. If we did one, get, it's still pretty big. Let's go into our decimals, 0 0.5, 0 0.05, 0 0.05. As you can see, that's too much. We don't need that much. So let's go into 0 0.05. Yeah, around here is pretty good. Now, depending on the size of your artwork, this is going to change. But you just want a slight hairline. Yeah, that's looking good. Where it shows your colors overlap. There's no definitive number. You have to play around. It depends upon everything. You might even have to do tests for this but I find that 0 0.003 works out really well. And so now my layer is a little bit bigger than my red. So I'm gonna click out of here and do my multiply so you can see what, what's happened. So let's go to here, hit multiply, and now you can see a slight overlay happens. But again, this is 11 by three inches, so at the right size, you can barely tell what's happening. You can always decrease your trapping if you're worried about seeing that stroke. Let's do it again, but with maybe some more detailed marks. Again, this can happen with vector imagery or typography. So again, I'm going to keep my key layer untouched, and I'm going to apply it to my background layer. So let me first do the divide, grab only my blue, and now I have this. I'm going to group that all together. I'm going to go to Object, Path, Offset Path. As you can see, I'll apply the same settings. And then I'll group it together in the Unite. And there we go. Now, doing the same thing. Going to apply multiply, and as you can see now, 
it's applied to everything. You usually want to have your key layer remain the same and all your under layers having the trapping applied. And there you go. Those are my two demonstrations on applying trapping. This is not the only way to do it, but it's definitely the easiest way to apply a trapping.